So uh, we uh, talked about uh, some issues in business ethics. So actually covering several chapters. So however, I just try to make it short. Uh, and especially the business ethics in international context are pretty much complicated. So I, I may use some other materials. However, the contents are pretty much uh, similar. So. Uh, we've been talking about corporate social responsibility. So uh, simply, we, saw, we, we see that uh, a company's effort to satisfy all of the stakeholders' needs, right? So that's uh, what a stakeholders approach to your business. However, the uh, business ethics are a little bit different from that uh, corporate social responsibility, right? A stakeholder approach. Because uh, especially in international context, we understand that lots of countries that have a different, say, uh, ideas on uh, stakeholders' uh, approach. Also, uh, countries uh, in, uh, across the world that have a different, say, uh, uh, rules, norms, regulation. So the problem here is that if you are actually running international organization, then uh, which rule of uh, game actually you are following in different uh, international business uh, uh, context. So probably you may be right in your countries in doing some business. However, that may, may not be right in other countries. So that's what I call some, what, what I call uh, uh, ethical dilemma. So ethically what is wrong in your country may not be right uh, may not be wrong in other countries, or uh, what is right here may not be right in other countries. So um, how can you then uh, adjust yourself, your companies in very different organization, uh, 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 internet, uh, countries, different, say, industrial context? So that's are the um, issues here. Um, simply say that uh, uh, we talked about like minimum wages, for instance. So we have uh, our own minimum wages here. However, that minimum wages in, in say far less developed countries does, does not have a, uh, that much good levels of minimum wages. So also like a regulation on environmental control and, and, and uh, environment, for instance like pollution um, control, for instance. Uh, like Western Europe as well as Korea does have a very tough on that environmental issue. However, some of the developed, less developed country does not have that strict uh, uh, environmental regulation. So in that case, um, is it really good for you to not really <coughs> concerning lots of uh, environmental issues when you're doing business in develop less developed countries, for instance. Uh, like we see, uh, like in say, some of the countries in Africa, for instance, certainly those countries does not have any rules on the issues of uh, environmental control. So it simply means that you can throw away your industrial waste uh, to the river, ocean, any place, because that country does not have any uh, like controlling mechanisms for that uh, behavior. So in that case, uh, is it okay for you or your firms doing that, uh, say, uh, uh, environmentally a toxic uh, dumping, uh, like bad materials, for instance, uh, out of the uh, uh, like river, ocean, or any other places? Um, so again, lots of dilemma actually you may confront in your international operation. So uh, how you as a manager dealing with this, um, much of the uh, involuntary, I mean, uh, business ethics, like managerial uh, ethical dilemma. So that is actually concerns. And at the end, uh, like the material here, the textbook or the PowerPoint here give you some guideline. However, that doesn't really the perfect or complete answer to solve that environmental ethics. I mean, so business ethics.
we talked about what is business ethics, what is uh, ethical strategy. Especially ethical strategy means that your plan or course of action that uh, does not really violate any uh, accepted principle. So uh, again, this day, your strategy does not really uh, fully meeting your company's operational or uh, profit-making, uh, say, uh, strategy, but also it should meet lots of ethical uh, standards, right? So that's why this day, making strategy is not uh, getting more tough and difficult because uh, you have to not only meet uh, stakeholders' requirement, but also the ethical standard. So uh, when you say business ethics, what kind of ethical dilemma in your business you are likely to have in your, say, real operations? A lot, of, uh, a lot of actually issues regarding that ethical uh, dilemma in business, but mostly they are uh, related to, as you say here, uh, five major uh, areas. Right? Your business practice, for instance, like employing people, managing and controlling and coordinating people. So a lot of issues are there. Also, you may have some, some ethical uh, dilemma, especially in your op uh, international operation. And human rights as well. Right? Uh, we feel, again, like consider that uh, our rights Employees' rights are pretty much natural, uh, obvious, and taken for granted. However, a lot of many other countries, especially less developed countries, uh, those nations doesn't really uh, offer any fundamental human rights. So the point is, what are you going to do with that human rights issue, especially when you are doing business in that less developed countries? And also, uh, regulation on your environment. Uh, mentioned earlier, like uh, like Afri African countries or some of the East Asia, uh, Southeast Asian countries, their uh, environmental regulation rules are not that really uh, uh, it's not really complicated as as a developed country tend to have. So uh, simply that doesn't mean that you are able you are allowed to exploit that lack of environmental regulation in that less developed countries. So how are you going to do, uh, stick to the uh, environmental issues where, um, in the country where there is not really uh, 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 environmental issues are really uh, provided or suggested. And also corruption things. Some of the countries or governments uh, sometimes uh, take their eye off on the uh, corruption thing. So, um, how are you going to do with the uh, uh, corruption, like bribery mostly representing the corruption issue here? So, is it okay to give the, um, say, bribery for the government to speed up your business process or uh, decision-making process from that country? Or it is not okay? We talked about like uh, BP, like British Petroleum is very famous for, for companies uh, that does have a, a strict uh, internal, say, code of conduct on the corruption issue. Like the uh, British Petroleum's, Petroleum is like global, transnational firms actually operating everywhere. But regardless of where you are actually operating, they are very tough on these uh, corruption issues. You should not. Uh, uh, do the bribery things to uh, local government, even if it is a uh, like some of the less developed countries. They are very strict on that uh, policy. But that's not always the case to all other uh, global firms. Some of the global firms are still very, uh, say, lenient on the uh, uh, issue of the uh, corruption, like bribery, or some of the firms. Uh, say that why not say giving kind of a, a gift giving what they call to to accelerate the uh, decision making process like china for instance it is okay according to those uh, multinational firms uh, to make better 
uh, faster uh, policy making favorable to the firms. So, uh, how are you dealing with this corruption, especially with the government? And moral obligation as well. Uh, should all multinational <laughs> firms stick to the um, uh, have obligated to say um, conduct a moral obligation of their business, right? But again, BP. I mean, uh, BP uh, had a, a huge, uh, uh, say, uh, um, if you remember, like uh, Mexican Gulf uh, crisis uh, accidents a few years ago, where there the uh, the oil tank of BP actually uh, the I don't know broken or. Whatever the uh, leak, a lot of oil to the oceans, contaminating the um, uh, ocean around the Louisiana area. So, so you may think that BP, um, you may have some of the negative, say, ideas on the company. But actually, BP is really one of the very foremost companies in doing this uh, business ethics. So BP case, uh, we know that the BP actually uh, built a lot of, say, desalination plants in lots of African countries so that people there can drink safe water all the time. So BP do not need, does not need, really need to do that, uh, uh, say, uh, like building plants for water. Uh, but they just do it because they feel that it is their obligation, right? But is it really necessary for all other companies doing the same things um, as they are part of like moral obligation to uh, public? So uh, these are the um, actually area where you mostly uh, tend to have lots of <coughs> ethical dilemma. So uh, how you actually uh, choose your firm's uh, action upon this uh, possible area of eth uh, business ethical dilemma is pretty much actually up to you, up to the companies. Uh, but what we can only suggest today is how then the uh, academia or some of the, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, ethics professors or researchers try to uh, suggest a, a, a right or a relevant, say, uh, course of action on that situation of business uh, ethical dilemma here. Um, so upon the question, uh, how you actually solve a uh, difficulty of, say, uh, uh, ethical dilemma of your business. These are some of the uh, um, suggested approach to uh, your problems. Uh, there are actually five school of thought on that issue, uh, telling or advise you how to manage that business ethical uh, problems. The first one is a straw man approach. What is straw man? <coughs> what? Not snowman, straw man. <laughs> yeah, uh, a straw man is like the, uh, I don't know, in, in Korea. Uh, in Korean, uh, I don't know, uh, like, uh, just like, so uh, that's a straw man, right? Uh, I don't know why they put uh, straw man uh, indicating all these four uh, theoretical, say, approach to your uh, ethical business, ethical problems. Um, but uh, the straw man here means that, uh, yeah, especially these four theories, 
uh, kind of telling us way of solving uh, ethical business ethical problem, but not really widely welcomed by the uh, practitioners, especially this day. It used to be accepted in the past, but not really this day because this advice does have some problems in the real cases. Let's have a look at, uh, I think I remember that a lot of you guys uh, uh, university entrance exam, uh, some of the very topics in your essay questions actually coming from uh, this theory. So again, business ethics doesn't really uh, end up with right, what is right or what is wrong answers. It is only uh, uh, rely on your own judgment. So it is actually up to you how you decide. We only tell you what are the uh, approach for that questions. So these are, as you see, these theories are some of the approaches. So which approaches you are taking as a manager is actually up to you. So uh, I'm going to tell you what this approach is actually uh, trying to uh, mean to the issues of uh, business ethics. Like Friedman Doctrine, the first one that we see here, is I think the, 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 certainly one of the most famous uh, uh, theoretical, say, uh, approach to the issues of uh, global business ethics. Uh, Friedman says, uh, kind of a Nobel Prize winner in economics, so uh, he is very famous in, uh, in saying that the, 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 the duty and the obligation of firm is simply maximizing profit and give it the, uh, the maximum return to the shareholders as well as the stakeholders. That's it. We just talked about this one. So he emphasized <coughs> satisfying the uh, shareholders, owners of the firms are the, 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 the most important job to do uh, from the company's perspective. So as we see what is comment here, ethical behavior of a firm is not really a necessary job for the companies to do. As far as the companies are doing, uh, the, the job of the company's doings are within the territory of rule and regulation and the, the company does not really, really need to do more than that one. So not violating uh, rules, principle of a, a social norms, a regulation, that's quite enough. Right? That's what companies should do uh, for their uh, uh, ethical business. Well, which is quite right, but if he is right, for instance, um, I think the, the, the limitation of what Friedman says was that he strictly divided the ideas of business ethics on one hand and also uh, corporate social responsibility or uh, stakeholders approach of the other. Right. So he said that simply satisfying stakeholders are quite enough. <coughs> that's what companies should do and that's the job of the uh, company's business ethics. Uh, however, this day business ethics and uh, uh, stakeholder managements are not really something that can be divided. It is like uh, intermine each other. It is kind of a saying the same uh, things and it's kind of a together each other. So uh, thinking about ethics separating from the uh, corporate social responsibility are not really making sense, especially this day. Uh, if he said so, <coughs> Uh, uh, so the, the Friedman says that just uh, uh, do your business within the game of the rule, right? Without any deception and fraud. <coughs> That's quite enough for uh, business ethics. So that does mean, however, if you are actually doing business in other countries where there are lack of there are lack of uh, lacks of uh, uh, any kind of a rule of a game or regulation disciplines, then you can do whatever you want in that uh, institutionally uh, deficient countries. Right. So, probably uh, what he said, this one, what like what he call a, the Friedman doctrine, 
was made somewhere in the 70s. Probably saying maybe right, but not really uh, perfectly correct or appropriate at uh, this time. Uh, what about then the cultural relativism? So cultural relativism and the Friedman's doctrines are very much similar to each other. Right? So I think uh, these are not in the textbook, so you better uh, look at this slide and you better to listen to what I'm saying. So a lot of us students are doing some homework or whatever. So what is uh, cultural relativism? Uh, in dealing with business ethics. So cultural relativism simply means that like <clears throat> when in Rome do as uh, Romans do. So that's actually the idea of the uh, cultural <coughs> relativism. If say uh, doing business in Bangladesh for instance, if you hire say uh, seven year boys and girls and paying them like <coughs> two cents a day if that is quite fine in Bangladesh, then why not doing so in Bangladesh? So that's what uh, cultural relativism. So in a bigger scale, the cultural relativism and the, the uh, Friedman doctrines are pretty much sharing some ideas together. So do you agree with this uh, uh, cultural relativism? In Africa, for instance, as I mentioned earlier, uh, dumping your, say, uh, uh, toxic materials or pollutants out to the river oceans are fine because the government does not limit your uh, <coughs> that action. So does that mean that it is okay to you to do that in Africa, right? So that's what basically uh, cultural relativ relativs relativism. It's just if you are uh, in Rome, just following the uh, Roman rules. So uh, if that's the true, then uh, it may be right if you say uh, giving the bribery to the government. I mean, if you look at like the um, uh, USA regulation which was made in 1977, uh, the, the regulation what I call a foreign corrupt practice. So uh, in USA, for instance, because of that regulation, giving the say bri bribery. To, uh, to any other government or uh, local uh, institution for business strictly uh, not allowed. <coughs> However, since you defined the meaning of bribery, uh, if you giving, or as I said, like gift giving, if you do the gift giving, uh, as a way not defined in that regulation, then it is considered okay, right? so which is not really the uh, really uh, making sense. Not really, which is really violating the uh, uh, fundamental principle of that regulation. Uh, so that's why, like BP case. I mean, I always say BP because the British Petroleum does have a really, really strong like their own ethical standard for uh, its operation. So I think uh, if you do lots of case on this, this business ethics, uh, BP is I think one of the most referring uh, cases as a uh, good company in that sense. And on the other hand, like, like Enron for instance, they always um, use as a bad example violating a lot of uh, business ethics in the other case. So uh, and BP is like a very good company in business ethics and, and Enron is considered a, a, a really bad company in, uh, in, in, in perspective of the business ethics. So BP case, very tough uh, on these, uh, say, corruption things. Uh, whatever bribery, whatever gift giving, strictly not allowed, which is indicating that BP does not allow uh, cultural relativism. Right? So, wherever you do the business, you just follow your uh, home country's regulation, which is UK. Right? So that's actually the company's ideas on the uh, business ethics. So in that sense, 
probably the uh, VP may be following, as you see, the third line, the righteous moralist for the company's ethical behavior in business. Uh, what is righteous moralist? Uh, righteous moralist is like uh, you are you just do the right things wherever you do the business. So wherever you do the business, you just do your own way, define in your headquarter or your home country, just like BP. Same policy, same regulation the companies actually adopt. Wherever uh, you do the business, that doesn't really matter. So, so that's quite good. But again, that one, the uh, uh, righteous uh, moralist approach is also receiving lots of criticism as well. The very uh, the kind of good example is this one. Like, uh, why a global firm say in Korea now try to do the business or making or building, say, uh, lines, assemblies in uh, Southeast Asia or Africa? Why company in Korea enter this nation? Because doing business there actually a lot cheap, right? Labor costs much cheaper. Securing material, uh, natural resources are much cheaper. So that's why you just try to take advantage of uh, low-cost resource-providing countries. But according to the uh, righteous approach, if your policies are strictly stick to this one, that means even if you are doing business, say, in Africa, you pay the same minimum wage to African uh, employees, just like you pay the minimum wage in Korea. So African employees exactly receiving the same amount of wage that the uh, Korean employees here receive. That doesn't make sense, actually, right? The, the reason for you to go there is actually save money of your operation. But if you do uh, stick to that uh, righteous approach in that business, in the name of, name of business ethics, then you just cannot really, say, uh, take the advantage or, say, enjoy the benefit of that less developed countries, a cheap uh, labor resource. So, uh, sounds right, but it is also case by case. You have to consider the purpose of why you are doing business in other countries. What about then the uh, uh, naive uh, immoralist? I think the uh, good old saying is, uh, too wrong does not make you right. Say, simply say here, all of the people here, students here, are doing the wrong things. Exactly, no exception. That doesn't mean that that wrong thing turn into a right things, right? So that's actually the point here. So if companies are doing a bad things in, say, a particular country, then why not for me to do the same way? So actually, a lot of uh, companies um, <clears throat> um, probably behave uh, uh, as a uh, naive uh, immoralist. Uh, a very classic example, uh, what is Colombia is very famous for? <coughs> what? Coffee. And what else? Uh, what else? What? Coffee and coffee. <coughs> yes, uh, and a lot of uh, natural resources, actually. A lot, plenty of oil. Uh, plenty of oil, uh, a lot of natural resources, but according to the uh, uh, text of our article here, and this is not my idea, uh, a drug, right? Cocaine and some, what, what else? Cocaine is only drug that I know. Uh, a lot of, say, marijuana, for instance. So, uh, 
people just go there to buy that one. So also the uh, security of that country is not really stable. So um, a lot of, say, especially American companies uh, are posting their, say, branches in Colombia uh, give a lot of, say, uh, aid money or bribery to the Colombian government or Colombian mafia. Uh, so by giving money to them, uh, the mafian uh, or gangs actually protect or make sure the safety of American companies there. So is it right? So that can be also ethical problem. So. I mean, uh, if you are, someday, I know that a lot of you guys would be a, a CEO of global firms. So if you are becoming the global firm CEO, certainly this issue will be the, 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 the most kind of issue that causing lots of headache to you. So are you, should, are, should you like pay the bribery to, to, to mafia to protect your firms in Colombia, for instance? What are you going to do if you are the CEO? So uh, if you have a very close relationship with mafia there, certainly you can run your business safely. And you can make sometimes a lot of profit. If all other company does that behavior in that country, then why not uh, for you to do the, the same things? So that, that's the uh, ethical uh, dilemma and again here. So, like BP case, no bribery is a very strict uh, policy. So, certainly the company there may not uh, do that way. But as we see here, the example, like a lot of American companies actually make a very close relationship with the uh, Colombian mafia for their business. Simply, all other companies are doing that, so why not? why we should become the uh, exception for that job. So that's a uh, naive, morality, immoralist approach. So which means that this approach people say that if all other people are doing that, then you can do that. Just the case in Colombia. Um, but actually that approach received also a lot of criticism this day. Um, uh, as I said, uh, all wrongs not turn into a right uh, things, right? So uh, even if all other company doing the wrong things, that doesn't mean that doing that would be a, a right thing. So if that country does have a, that kind of a, a dangerous, say, uh, business in, uh, environment, then you should not enter those country beforehand. So that's the actually advice of the, a lot of ethical business scholars these days. If Colombia is a very dangerous place for your business, then you just don't do the business there. But that's pretty much academic advice, right? I don't know, real company really do that, uh, choose that options. Um, a lot of cash in that country, so probably the multinational firms won't give up their chance in that um, uh, market. So the point here, yeah, when you actually uh, confronting the uh, real ethical uh, business dilemma, like how can you do in this country or in that country where uh, norms and like social acceptance are all different? All this theory advice all together telling you just do as, uh, as woman. If, you, if that environment, in that environment, if that behavior is okay, then why not? Except this one, righteous uh, approaches. So uh, probably uh, I may ask you what's your ideas, but um, again, the uh, this day, uh, any kind of advice from this <coughs> theory or approaches or perspectives does not receiving a wide welcome because um, company actually following some of the advice actually 
uh, at the end uh, didn't get what they want because like pretty much globalized world this day so what you do best in other country actually affect your business in home country like oxy what's the uh, oxy crisis this day in korea you know what's going on there right so it may be the problem here uh, in Korea, but I, I certainly believe that the uh, headquarter <coughs> of that firm in UK may be affected by their kind of a long business in Korea, right? So um, the headquarter in, in Korea, in UK, should not consider the issue in Korea as a uh, little issue to the firms. Uh, again, the social activists are so uh, wide, they are so powerful, so do not consider them as a, a minority power. So, uh, this one, uh, probably <coughs> one suggestion, but not really perfect, especially this uh, integrated, globalized society. So, that's why. Uh, then what are the uh, like alternative? You are having a lot of say uh, difficulty in like ethical decision making. Then, if these are not that perfect, then what kind of other advice given to you? Certainly, these three uh, may be uh, kind of a better solution for your say ethical business decision making. Uh, these three are not really again perfect, but. Uh, I can pretty tell you that these three theories build a very strong foundation on which a lot of actually companies build their own, say, uh, uh, business ethical decision making uh, for the business, for their business. So let's talk about this one after the break. So that just don't get confused between uh, your, say, CSR and ethical uh, 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 business ethics here. Actually, the same things, but uh, business ethics are actually uh, uh, more wider scope. Like stakeholders <coughs> approach or CSR simply means that doing the right or good things for all public, <coughs> simply say. However, business ethic case, another issue is what you are good at doing something may not be good at some other countries. So that's the differences. Right. Um, again, like hiring teenage boy in Indian, uh, your Indian companies, Indian factories. Uh, it's not okay in Korea, but it is okay in India. Right. So, are you going? What are you going to do? From this uh, stakeholders <coughs> approach, certainly hiring teenage boy in India may be good for the community there and country there to make the country more prosperous. However, from the ethical point of view, hiring them is not right in India. Right? Hiring like teenage boy, seven or eight years old, boys and girls are not really right. So that's the differences, right? So let's have a then talk about what is utilitarian approach, what is a Kant approach and uh, justice approach and right approach, right theory approach after the break. Um, so uh, let's have a look at uh, utilitarian approach and the uh, Kantian approach. The utilitarian approach is that uh, so I think the, uh, you just don't know what behavior is right uh, in what countries and, and, and so on, in, in what context. You, you, you are doing it in very different contexts, business contexts, simply but however you don't know what behavior is right ethically. So the utilitarian approach is actually saying that if the uh, outcome, the result, yeah, uh, the, if the outcome or result is right, then your behavior is justified. Right. So that's that's pretty much utilitarian approach. Um, I, I just con con uh, you, I, I think that you may be uh, confused about these ideas. Uh, actually, uh, the end outcome result justify your say uh, intention behavior or whatever so that's what utilitarian approach is like uh, say what about like you setting say a uh, new oil pump 
uh, uh, facility in, say, uh, Alaska, for instance. Uh, like uh, setting, setting up, uh, making, building, say, oil drill uh, facility in the, the region actually gives a lot of, say, economic uh, profit, right, growth, uh, a lot of benefits on one hand, but also on the other hand, it may give you a lot of a negative side effect by that, like uh, environmental, say, contamination, um, say, also um, like just damaging the environment simply there. Right? So ethically, simply developing a lot of, say, uh, oil pumping out drilling spot in Alaska may not be good ideas ethically. So, what is right, say, business decision or behavior for that decision? So, what you need to do is, what are the uh, outcome of that decision? If you say that making, building, say, oil field, oil, uh, 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 say, <coughs> oil well in that area, so you just compare the benefit, cost, advantage and disadvantage, and if you end up with, say, Benefits are larger than cost, or advantages are larger than benefit, and, and, and then just do it. So that's actually what utilitarian approach is. Uh, it does not really tell you the right answer for your ethical decision making, but uh, the ethic utilitarian approach actually uh, help management uh, advancing a lot of, say, profit cost analysis or, say, risk management analysis and so on. Right? Simply uh, justify uh, your, say, uh, behavior. Right? If dominant others are happy about for what you do, then it is okay, simply. That's what a utilitarian uh, approach is. Uh, so a lot of, say, uh, like chemical company, for instance, or energy companies, their investment, their um, uh, plannings are pretty much very uh, environmentally sensitive and also, of course, very good part is they actually create a lot of uh, job, economic wealth also growing rapidly because these industries are quite uh, requiring massive investment. But on the other hand, the environment are pretty much damaged. So you have to uh, seriously uh, calculating what are the profit cost Right? What are the uh, kind of a risk by that investment decision? Uh, so just keep calculating that one. So you may end up with some conclusion at the end. Then just do it. If positives are larger than the negative. Of course, uh, it, it is not really perfect. Uh, utilitarian approach is not always perfect. Especially, uh, it received a lot of criticism from the uh, medical, uh, especially the uh, uh, insurance, uh, uh, insurance industry, for instance. Like, if you're sick, you just go to the hospital, and your cost is actually covered by your medical insurance, right? Um, so the, the problem is like, like HIV disease, AIDS, for instance. Very few people actually get that disease. However, the cost of curing I mean, HIV or AIDS is curable to say. But uh, like a few years ago, people die of that one. So it's a very curable disease at the moment. However, the cost of curing it is very expensive. And that cost is actually covered by the insurance payer like you. So even if you didn't get uh, diseased by the uh, HIV or AIDS, your insurance payments actually pay to that uh, AIDS uh, infected uh, patients. So you may not happy about it because your money is actually used for that very few uh, 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 HIV uh, AIDS uh, disease. So uh, some of the countries say uh, um, our insurance co do not cover AIDS, HIV virus. Is it right? According to the utilitarian uh, approach, it is right. Because only very few get that disease. So uh, 
your uh, say uh, medical insurance uh, money pay should not be wasted for that for that very few persons, patients. So according to the utilitarian approach, however, from the uh, human rights uh, approach, that's not really right decisions. Even if your money uh, paid to that uh, expensive, say, uh, aid curing uh, um, uh, patient aids patients and curing them, you just you have to do it. So uh, the point here, the so utilitarian approach is simply try to compare cost and benefit, advantage and disadvantage. Uh, so you just choose the the the, 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 the um, you just choose one. Right? If the advantage is right, bigger than the cost, advantages are bigger than uh, disadvantage, and and so on. But like insurance example case here, ins insurance industries case here, uh, it's not always giving you a perfect solution. What about the uh, Kantian, Kant is like a philosopher in, in uh, Germany. So uh, according to Kant, he say that the most important thing is what? Uh, have you heard, the study the uh, philosophy uh, in your high school? Yeah, so what is Kant said? What Kant said? I'm just just asking you. I'm not really uh, seriously look at his book or. Uh, but simple idea from Kant is that the most important uh, ethical decision is kind of a decision making based on the consideration of human dignity, human right, and um, human cannot be should not be used as a mean. Human is the end. So. Point is, whatever your decision, business decision is, it should not by violate the ideas of human dignity, human say right, uh, value of humans, and so on. So human should not be used as a, any means. So that's the point of Kant. So that ideas uh, can be reflected in the business ethical decision making. So uh, if you are just confused. Don't, don't know what to do, just uh, borrow the ideas of Kant. That's what the Kantian uh, uh, theorists say. If your decision making violates human dignity, right, and so on, then just don't do it. <coughs> it's like setting up business or factory in India and hiring, say, teenage boys and girls. That's not right according to Kantian's uh, approach. Uh, what about the right theories? Right theory also very similar to Kantian uh, theory. So thinking about the fundamental right of human beings, right? We have a right to speech, right to speak something. We have a, a right to collect together, to raise one voice. And we have a right to say, uh, argue something by, uh, by doing some, some demonstration or whatever. So a lot of <coughs> fundamental rights human beings has. So if your business ethical decision making is not uh, really violating that human rights, that's, that's quite ethical decision. Uh, justice theory, simply considering, if you are really not knowing what to do ethically, Think about justice. So, so that's the point of the theories. So according to this justice, justice means actually a lot, right? So this kind of concept, right, like right, justice, uh, scholars actually uh, define so many different ways. So um, The justice here is actually the definition of the professor Raoul. So you don't need to know who he is. But according to him, the justice here means equal distribution of the, uh, say, income benefits to all people. Right, so whatever your decision making, 
if you are not really knowing whether it is right ethically just think about whether your behavior or outcome of it is actually not by violating the justice like equal distribution of wealth to all people if it is violating like equal distribution of your wealth <coughs> or value to people then you can do it if it is violating to that justice concept don't do it so that's the issue, actually the point um, so of course a straw man theory approaches here not really perfect a lot of limitations so borrowing these ideas are not really relevant these days while this or other remaining theories quite right but not really perfectly right uh, if you consider the real business case this day so um, that's why this day a lot of uh, say uh, ethical uh, theorists business ethics professors try to integrate all these ideas uh, as one right. so no perfect theory actually give you a perfect answer so that's why the uh, uh, integration is quite uh, important so let's stop here uh, let's continue then what are the real business implications so uh, a lot of theories actually suggest just you guys some ideas but you have some uh, very different widely varying uh, business contexts in different countries so uh, in practice what are the uh, like real implication uh, for the managers who are confronting with the uh, ethical decision making of their business so we just talk about that one a little bit on Tuesday